Episode 68 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, everybody. Or should I say, uh, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Salam alaikum. Uh, to my, this is an episode especially for my uh, Arabic speaking uh, subscribers, followers, followers of the Interpretation Station. We're going to have a second go at this. Uh, so we, 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 I did my first one. A couple of weeks ago, first Arabic episode, or I think it was Qatar, um, speaking about, uh, it was in the Human Rights Council. Anyway, I see it seemed to get quite a good reception, so I'm going to give it another stab today. Um, I don't like to call these tutorials, okay, because um, this is my, my, I always like to start my episodes with this waiver with the Arabic, that I'm not an expert in Arabic. What these are is me just sort of giving you my idea on how I would translate uh, or interpret if I had to give in, uh, texts from Arabic into English. Uh, if you like what you hear, if you want to pick my brains and copy some of my ideas from what I give you, you are more than welcome to. That is the whole point of this. There are some things that I, I'm not a certain of myself, and I will make that very clear. So like I said, these, these aren't tutorials. These are, if you like, it's a brainstorming session, okay? Let's call it that, a brainstorming session. And you guys feel free in the comments section to give me any input, anything I got wrong, or give me some clarifications, because some of this stuff from the Arabic, especially in this episode that we're going to do, it's quite, uh, some of it's quite technical. It's all to do with various religious names as well. Um, and it's good for me to get, you know, clarification on some of these things and it'll help me in, in, in future. So the subject that we're going to do today, it's quite a topical subject, obviously. It's, it's you know, it's the situation uh, in uh, Palestine, the occupied Palestinian territories, the OPT, as we sometimes call it, and everything that's been going on uh, recently in the last month or so uh, with Israel and so on. So it was, um, it was from a meeting it was actually a big meeting that took place on the 27th of May uh, in the uh, it was in the Human Rights Council. It was like an emergency meeting uh, that was summoned uh, at the Human Rights Council to discuss the situation there. And the statement I've chosen it was delivered by Egypt. By the way, just take note of the take note of some of the words I used. Just even when I'm just uh, introducing this, okay, the statement that was delivered, the meeting that was summoned, these little collocations I think you might find useful. I, I do it sort of deliberately just to get those words churning away in your, in your heads, okay? So it was delivered by Egypt. It was on behalf of the group of Arab states or the Arab group, uh, as you can just, as you can call them. And, um, and it was ahead of, uh, there was a resolution that was um, submitted to that session and they're basically just sitting out, the, the, the Egyptians are setting out the general position of the Arab group uh, with regards to all those events there. So, uh, as usual, I'm going to uh, pull up the page. I'm going to disappear into the corner. Okay, so as you can see here, it's handily written at the top, Egypt on behalf of the group of Arab states. And so, yeah, it's the things, the things I've highlighted are the, are the sort of interesting expressions that I feel are interesting expressions that we're going to go through. And at the end, of course, I'm going to give you a full sort of sight translation uh, of the text, just to give you an idea of how, how I would do it, um, to just slightly replicate what booth conditions to an extent. So... Okay, here we go. So the first thing I've highlighted here is uh, al okay, al uh, al Um Now, the reason I've highlighted that is, you know, just it's, he's talking about rather, you know, the, the countries that have initiated the the holding of this meeting. I think that is for me, uh, you know, they called for the holding of this meeting. They they initiated. التي كانت دولها من بين الدول الدعية العقد. So I would say here they were the initiators of the holding of this special session, this emergency session. And as a and as a matter of fact, I mean, I actually, 
I just thought I'd double check. So, uh, Adora Alistith Naia. So, that it, was, uh, it was called uh, the special session. So, um, that's a, just, it's just good set terminology uh, to know. It's not an emergency session, it's just the, the special session. Okay, uh, next, um, next expression that I've highlighted here. Uh, and again, just forgive me if any uh, any of my uh, m any mistakes in pronunciation. Again, I sometimes struggle to know exactly what uh, what the vowels are in between all the uh, consonants. So just uh, just bear with me, uh, if you would. Okay, so Tudin al Majmua al Arabiya Ta'ashat al Abarat Akdam Kawat al Ihtalal. Um, so here, this is a very this is a set piece term, really. You hear a lot in wherever it may be in the Security Council, General Assembly. Whenever there's been a, an incident, and whenever uh, the speaker wants to uh, condemn what's happening, so you'll find that the sort of the, uh, the the typical expression is we condemn in the strongest terms. Okay. Now that's if you have the time. Now, if you're under pressure, if it's a fast speaker. The other alternative that I tend to employ perhaps more frequently is we vehemently condemn or strenuously condemn. Um, again, so it's up to you when you where, uh, where you stand, how the speaker's going, uh, if you have the time to say in the strongest terms. But I, I tend to just place, just go with vehemently or strenuously. And here's a question for you that I'm just this expression, akdam. this word, the akdam here. Uh, is that just? Is it all just the, the set expression? That's how you say it. I, I was a bit confused as to the significance of uh, this. The word akdam. Um, you wouldn't just say be'ashad abarat. You you would say akdam as well. So yeah, if you have an answer to that, stick it in the comments. Thank you. Uh, okay. So as a, now this next bit, fill fill al kots. Now the reason I highlighted this. Was okay, so I know that uh, Al Qadz al Sharif is what uh, what you in Arabic what you call um, Jerusalem, and um, when I started out at the UN, so I was in, I was told that if we hear the use of Al Qadz, you know, often we'll hear it. For example, when uh, for example me when there's a French speaker in the Arabic booth. Uh, Interpreting from the Arabic into French, and they'll say Al Quds, and that we were we've told we're told just to basically say uh, Al Quds uh, as well. So um, as opposed to putting it into, and as opposed to calling it to Jerusalem. So I, I guess my advice would just would just be to leave it as Al Quds or Al Quds Al Sharif. Just repeat what the uh, the speaker is saying. And this is an issue that's going to come up again in a minute. And so that's why it's important. Now, this word here, um, what's going on here at the mo at the uh, the mosque? Were muhaytihu. Now, why have I um, highlighted that? Well, I guess perhaps uh, the you might be initially tempted to say something like uh, the mosque and its surroundings uh, or its environs. But to be honest, I think we would say in English, I would say when you're talking about a place, a building, and the area around, I would say the grounds. You know, in the the mo in the mo inside the mosque and in its grounds, you know, the grounds of a property. That's that's what we. That's the most natural thing for us to say, uh, as native English speakers, the grounds. Okay. Khilal uh, Shahr Ramadan al Mubarak. Here, the most natural thing for me to say in English, the thing that I most uh, recognise is the the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, I would say is again the most. Uh, Natural thing to say there. I don't know if you could say during the month of Blessed Ramadan, but certainly again, as a native English speaker, to me, what sounds most appropriate is the holy month of Ramadan. And now, so picking up here on what I was saying a moment ago about Al Quds, Biknisa Al Kiema. Now I had to look this up because okay, so now I realise it's the the big church in Jerusalem, the church of the the Holy Sepulchre. And I see there are, in English, I sort of looked this up on church, and that in the Eastern Christian tradition, uh, they call it the Church of the Resurrection, I believe. 
Okay, so it says here the Church of the Re- Resurrection or the Church of the An- Anastas- Anastasis. So I see that the Church of the Re- Resurrection is, if you like, the literal translation of um, Knesset al uh, Kiama. However, to be honest, I've never, I w- if you were to say that to me, um, if you were to say to me the Church of the Resurrection, I wouldn't know what you were talking about. I'm not an expert on e- ecclesiastical names or ecclesiastical laws. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know where the Church of the Resurrection is. I would, however, know where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is. That I would immediately know. That's Jerusalem. So there, perhaps, my advice would be: when you hear Knesset uh, al Qiyama, would perhaps be to say the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So it, you know, the same rule doesn't always apply. I'd say with Al. If you hear Al Quds, stick to Al Quds. But if you hear the Knesset al Qiyama, I would sooner go for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Okay, moving on. Uh, so this would be, I would just say, a forced evictions. That's a very important term to have in this, you know, in this context. Obviously, that's one of the central elements of the whole thing. These evictions that are taking place in the various, um, in the various neighbourhoods here. What they're talking about, Salwan and Sheikh, Sheikh Jarrah. So forced evictions, we would call them. <clears throat> Again, another set important set phrase here. Uh, 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 so this is again incitement to so this seems to me another important sort of set expression this uh, 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 um, which I guess it would be incitement to, to hatred incitement to hate so incitement is a very important uh, word now, moving on to the next paragraph. This is a word that made, has made, you know, given me pause for thought. This al uh, at um, Obviously, it's a word that's used frequently uh, in this, again, in the context of this, the, the, the situation uh, in Gaza, Palestine, and, and so on. And it strikes me that there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, now, in this case, I see here, um, okay, it's talking about al-atadat, al-israelia, al-mutawasila. So I think this, this seems to be talking about the, the sort of general Israeli aggression uh, that's going on in, 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 in Gaza. Um, it's, it's, it's used more generally here. And I think in that context, when it's used more generally, it makes more sense to say the aggression. However... It seems to me also that the user it's used in with more specific uh, attacks. Okay, uh, actually going back up to here, um, where they're um, uh, condemning the Belatada al al Falastanin Falkots. This would seem to be more appro- here. It would seem more appropriate to use maybe attacks, like when 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 you're actually looking at them more individually, more specifically. Um, I would say that it's better to use attacks, but as I say here, down here, where they're talking about the, the, the Israeli offensive, there's another synonym for you, offensive as a whole, perhaps aggression seems uh, more seems uh, more natural to me in English, the better word. Okay, now these this Israeli, uh, Israeli aggression, so it's targeting monatic, sikniya, maktuda, b'sikan. Or as I should have perhaps have pronounced it, muktadhata bisakan. And here I think it's perhaps slightly better just to step back uh, from the original Arabic. Um, I mean, so muktadhata, it's like uh, crowded, overcrowded, whatever. But I think here we would talk about densely populated uh, neighborhoods, densely populated areas. Again, this is a common expression that's used when one side is accusing the other of whatever it is, shelling civilian areas. They'll often, you know, the Russians will talk about it, what, the, what the Ukrainians are doing in Lugansk and Donetsk. You know, they'll say they're targeting or shelling densely populated neighborhoods. So that tends to be the accepted terminology for that kind of situation. Then down here, so this was a word that came up in the previous statement I did on Qatar a couple of weeks ago. 
when it came as uh, it was as Tashrid. So I, I think here the best word, solution here to go for it is to displace. They they displaced more than uh, fifty thousand uh, families, um, and then here again they use this word uh, bihim. Now in this context, I think is perhaps um, overcrowded. Um, in this in this case, they're talking about the situation in the um, UNRWA uh, refugee centres, shelters, and so on. So I think in a in a in a specific um within the grounds of a specific complex you i think you talk about that are overcrowded you know often they use over we over talk about uh, prisons being overcrowded so i think here uh that you would um you would use overcrowded here but in when you're talking about a sort of wider area as i say a region a neighborhood then that's when you you would be talking more about you know the densely more densely populated areas and okay this and then the reference here then to uh covid uh but uh covid19 uh the word so i would say here uh this khatra uh lintishar susceptible to the spread of covid you got two words you see in english you've got conducive and susceptible, that I would sort of take as a pair, as almost as of antonym. So conducive tends to have the connotation of something slightly positive, the conducive to improving the situation, whereas susceptible definitely has that negative uh, connotation to it. So I think when we're talking about the spread of COVID, we, we want to be introducing that sort of negative element and susceptible i think is a good word a good solution for that okay so coming now to the second page here so, okay so i've made a note for myself the cars uh in action okay that's definitely the word you want here and now this word they, they use a couple of times then in this statement um al -ghashim. They, they used it before near the start when they talked about um al ihtilal al ghashim like the brutal occupation i think brutal is probably the the best word but it, you know it's always good to have a something an alternative up your sleeve and so so here you could perhaps you could say perhaps vicious brutal vicious cruel perhaps Talk about tend to talk about more cruel treatment uh, in English. So I, I think you're best going for you know brutal as your number as your best your top choice, and perhaps vicious as an alternative if if that word is repeated. Uh, and then okay, muhasibatihu, uh, very important word here, uh, accountability. Uh, that's definitely one to to make a note of. Uh, you know accountability for these. Um, violations although the way that the sentence is expressed i think you always have to add, throw in a word here um since i take it this an it refers back to the the class i see in action in putting an end to the occupation and an muhasibatihu so you may have to say here in action to uh, for in in terms of ensuring accountability so this is one of those occasions where in the English you actually have to add something to make the sentence flow. It tends to be the other way around. In English you can tend to take shortcuts from the source language and cut certain words out. On occasion that we have to add something, I think this is an appropriate place to add the ensure to ensure accountability. And then this sentence here, how to best reflect this in English, you know, this ilauda, il attaqad, you know, um, it's about the, the Israelis, the, the, the occupying power, giving them the impression that they're getting the green light to, to, to kill fat Palestinians. If you want to, you know, get it, to convey the, the meaning of the Aouda, you, you could just throw in, a, in an again somewhere, you know, giving the, uh, giving the occupying power the impression again that they were getting the green light, okay? Lead them to believe, give them the impression. So one of those two. And then at the end here, dun uh, I guess here the, the most straightforward uh, rendering of that would be without consequences 
or if, but if you're feeling really, I mean, in the context here, if you're feeling very confident, you could also say, uh, with impunity, you know, continue these violations, committing these crimes and violations without impunity, or rather, sorry, without consequences or with impunity. So that's a couple of options you have there. Uh, here, we've just got to, you know, this is just to remind you of just a typical English wording here, al-jareem wal majazir alati tartakab bihaka sha'ab al-falastini. You know, the, the crimes and massacres uh, committed against, perpetrated against, carried out against is a bit weaker. But, you know, you always want to have a few options for, for that tartakab verb. Uh, down here, uh, this is another example. Perhaps we have to add something in the English. Um, okay, so they're talking. One of the you know one of the big things they're talking about here is setting up this uh, uh, commission of inquiry, and it sounds to me it's very similar to what they had perhaps in the the situation in Syria, where they have something called a triple I M, and that is called the independent impartial investigative mechanism and within that I think you have the commission of inquiry um, but those are the sort of important words and I suspect things may be heading in that similar direction I mean here okay uh, they want a independent uh, transparent investigation and they want to establish muhasaba uh, uh, um, they want to ensure accountability. Okay, so for for muntahaki, uh, you know, in English, the violators. If you want to express it in uh, one word, I don't really like that as a word in English. To be honest, it doesn't sound quite right. The violators of um, international law. Uh, you know, in English, we tend to talk maybe about accountability for the violations of international law, or accountability accountability for the perpetrators of violations of international law. So again, I think you, it, it would be forgivable, I think, if this was going really fast to say violators, it would be okay. But as I say, it's not a great word in English, and I would consider perhaps tweaking it a little bit, you know, ensuring accountability for violations of, of international law. Of course, this is this package, um, you know, certainly the UN that's talked about frequently, of uh, international uh, humanitarian law and international human rights law. And with the international humanitarian law, you can certainly do the shortcut there to IHL. International human rights law doesn't lend itself as much to the shortcut, the IHRL. You don't hear that very often, and I tend to give that its full name. So again, under those circumstances, I would probably say accountability for violations of IHL and international human rights law. So that's, that's how I would do it. And then uh, in the final paragraph, this is, as I've just highlighted, this, this is a sort of um, rather well-used, well-worn cliche that's often trotted out at the UN for all sorts of, in all, for all sorts of different subjects. It's just good to know it as a set phrase, you know. Uh, to stand on the uh, the right side of history, as the whole package, standing on the right side of history. Now, there's just one thing before I do my sight translation of the whole text. I just want to go back to that I, I left out, and it was when I was talking. I, I skipped this bit when I was talking about Al Quds and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So this neighbourhood, uh, Bab al Amud. So again, I, I had to look this up. And uh, so I found it was referred to as the English, um, we in the West refer to as the Damascus Gate. Uh, so again, in that context, I, I see there's a different, you know, there's different versions depending, you know, so the, 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 the Arabic version is this, the, uh, the, the gate, the Balamud, and I see that there is, um, and I see that the, uh, the Israelis or the, the, the Jews would, refer to it as the Shechem or Nablus Gate. Again, I think your best bet is to probably call it the Damascus Gate. It probably is uh, the most uh, universally recognized name for that uh, for that gate. But I, I, again, there may be, you may have to follow in 
the internal sort of rules for these kinds of things for whichever organization or for whichever ministry you happen to be working with often you have they have their sort of specific internal rules for when it comes to nomenclature for your naming conventions just for me the most obvious thing to recognize the reference would be the uh, the damascus gate okay so that brings us to the end of the text so what i'll do now is i'll just give you a, a quick my sort of site translation of this uh maybe i'll try and throw in a couple of fancy a couple of fancy words in uh here and there just to exp try and expand your uh, vocabulary a little bit and uh let's see how we go madam president uh, it's an honor for me to deliver this statement on behalf of the arid group uh, whose states were among the initiators for convening this uh, special session. The Arab group uh, strenuously condemns uh, the uh, brutal uh, occupation by the Israeli forces and attacks on, uh, on Palestinians uh, in Al-Quds, and especially uh, the Damascus Gate and inside the... Uh, noble Al-Aqsa Mosque and in its grounds uh, during the holy month of Ramadan, as well as uh, in and around the Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, during uh, Holy Saturday. By the way, Holy Saturday, I had to look that up, seeing where I'm from, you don't tend to hear much about Holy Saturday. You hear about Good Friday, uh, you hear about you know Easter Sunday. Uh, we don't tend to refer as much to the Saturday. So, okay, I think Holy Saturday is perhaps the best way of dealing with that. Uh, carrying on then. Uh, and in the neighborhoods of Asalwan and Sheikh Jarrah, meanwhile, uh, scores of Palestinian families have been threatened with forced eviction. By the way, for this uh, Asharat, so I said you can say scores, 20, or dozens, tens, uh, tw uh, you know, it's dozen being 12. To be honest, in, in, in newspapers and news coverage, they do tend to talk about scores. There were scores of victims, uh, scores of refugees, more so than dozens. So that's just a quick little tip there. As a result of the violent campaign pursued by the occupying power uh, and including incitement to hate by Israeli officials and uh, attacks by uh, right-wing extremists uh, under the protection or with the protection of the police uh, against uh, Palestinian or Palestinian citizens in Israel. Uh, the Arab group uh, repudiates, the Arab group uh, deplores uh, the ongoing Israeli aggression against the Gaza Strip which has targeted uh, densely populated residential areas, leading inter alia to the deaths of 248 uh, Palestinians, uh, including 66 children, and the wounding of uh, more than 1,900 uh, Palestinians. Uh, it has seen the displacement of more than uh, 50,000 families, while uh, shelters and uh, refugee centers uh, run by uh, UNRWA have become overcrowded. And this has created uh, an, env uh, an environment susceptible to the spread of the COVID-19 virus. President, uh, the inaction by the international community uh, in, in putting an end to the vicious Israeli occupation and uh, its violations and ensuring its accountability uh, could uh, lead the uh, occupying power uh, to believe that they again have the green light, green light uh, to kill Palestinians and to continue their violations and crimes with impunity. Furthermore, the Arab group um, urges the international community uh, to act urgently uh, to stop uh, these uh, crimes and massacres uh, which are being committed against the Palestinian people. And we hold uh, the forces of the occupying power 
entirely responsible, uh, entirely and directly responsible uh, for the consequences and repercussions of this criminal aggression against the Palestinian people as a whole and on the uh, Gaza Strip and uh, occupied Al-Quds in particular. The Arab group uh, supports the appeal of the uh, Palestinians to carry out uh, independent, transparent international investigation and hold to account uh, the, the perpetrators of uh, violations of IHL and of international human rights law uh, committed in uh, Palestinian, occupied Palestinian territories, uh, including in East Al-Quds and in particular in the Gaza Strip. And we call on the member states to stand on the right side of history and to, to save and protect innocent civilians by uh, voting in favor of the uh, resolution uh, introduced to this session introduced or submitted presented to this session i thank you okay so tried a couple of new things there a couple of throw in a couple of interesting words i hope that you might be able to pick up on and integrate into your own uh work i hope you found that interesting i hope you've learned a few new things there i hope we've got some of those uh the dilemmas sort of a bit more clarified when it comes to place names and the sort of way we handle those what what how to make some of these place names most understandable to the sort of public at large as opposed to just uh, the people who are specifically you know as opposed to just the diplomats um so if you have enjoyed that let that uh, episode remember it's not a tutorial it's just a brainstorming session Smash the thumbs up button. Uh, give me a like. Uh, please do subscribe if you're finding these these uh, these episodes useful. Tell your friends. Share it with them. And uh, it's been a pleasure as always. And uh, I look forward to uh, to do more of these brainstorming episodes with you. All the best for now. Episode sixty-eight of the Interpretation Station is adjourned. <laughs>